Good evening, everyone. I'm truly delighted to welcome you all to Division I's Leadership Learning Series. This is more than just a collection of educational sessions. It's the gateway to personal and professional growth, a journey towards becoming more effective leaders and confident communicators. In the course of our lives, we often find ourselves in situations where leadership and effective communication are not just valuable, but absolutely critical. Whether you're in the boardroom, classroom, or the living room, the skills that you will acquire in this series right here will make a significant difference. So as you embark on this journey with us, be open to new ideas, be eager to learn, and be willing to challenge yourself. The benefits of attending these sessions are countless, and the skills you will gain will serve you in all areas of life. I encourage you to actively participate, ask questions, and make the most of this incredible journey. Thank you for being here today, and let's set out on this exciting adventure of self-improvement together. Enjoy these sessions, make new friends, and let's support one another on our quest for leadership, excellence, and effective communication. While today is the first session of our series, do look out for the upcoming ones. And we promise to have one session on the last Friday of every month. So are you all ready to get started? Yes. That's great. Yes. It's great to hear that. I would encourage you all to be on video. This is your time. This is the time for you to shine. So please do make the most of this opportunity. Come on video and be participative. Today, we will in fact be focusing on the topic, public speaking in a digital world. In an era where screens bridge distances and where virtual communication plays a pivotal role, it is essential that we master the art of speaking effectively in this digital world. Today's session will help people you with the skills and knowledge that you will need to thrive in this evolving landscape. Our distinguished speaker will provide valuable insights for you to confidently navigate the challenges and opportunities of public speaking in the digital age. Our esteemed keynote speaker for today enjoys a deep appreciation for human connections. In 2021, she joined Toastmasters, recognizing it as an exceptional platform for forging unique connections, building friendships, and learning collaboratively. Her achievements within Toastmasters are truly remarkable. Many of us in the room are already a fans of her. She is a district champion of the International Speech Contest, Table Topics Contest, and the first runner-up of the evaluation contest for District 92 for the term 2021-2022. This remarkable individual is a five-time Triple Crown awardee with a noteworthy Spearhead Award in District 92 for the term 2021-2022. Her involvement within the Toastmasters community is extensive, having served as a speechcraft coordinator, club mentor, club coach, and a mentor to several fellow Toastmasters. She has taken on all seven club officer roles multiple times and even assumed the role of area director for District 112, New Zealand during the term 2022-2023. As a passionate number lover, professionally, she juggles with numbers as a regional manager at the London Stock Exchange Group. With a thunderous round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome the ever smiling and charismatic finance manager of District 121, Toastmaster Arundhati Basu. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Ajay. It always blows my head off how prepared Ajay is for everything. The way you script, just send me that introduction of mine because I'm only so happy about listening to my own accomplishments, right? But Ajay, hats off to your preparation and thank you for that very wonderful introduction on a Friday. I think you've set the tone right for me for the weekend. So thank you so much for that. 
Perfect. So how is the very inspiring division I doing today? <laughs> I always look at this division very passionately because it has I in it. You know, I to me is me <laughs> and I love myself for all of y'all here. I don't know how much of it y'all love because y'all are here on a Friday evening to listen to me. So I must just feel very grateful. See how amazingly inspiring this division is. They have chosen Friday <laughs> that also the last Friday when Oh, maybe they considered that people might not have got salary yet, so they can't party. So then they attend a Division I event and party with, with the Toastmasters here. Perfect. So for all of y'all who are on screen, gives me assurance that Teams is working fine and I can see people. But for the all the others in the room, look, it's Friday and you've chosen to come and attend the session. I'm hoping Namita hasn't forced you at all. So please feel free to turn on your camera. I love to see faces. I can't see the chat on Teams, which is even more important. Oh, then somebody doesn't like me at all. They're like, listen to her twice. <laughs> right okay so if you all turn on cameras no forces if you're in a position on a friday evening to turn on your cameras please feel free yes now i can look at our pradyum where are you i mean i can see only dark house there but that's okay we'll go with that perfect so that this was the topic that was shared by, shall I say, intellectual member of Division I, Toastmaster Ajay. I don't know what's the background work, but he said, don't talk about public speaking anymore. Speak about public speaking in a digital world. So let's see what we can do about it. First question. And honestly, you all have to answer this rather than the chat, because like I said, I can't see a chat. So I, I would want to hear some voices. So the first question is, how many of you here have heard of chat GPT? Oh, thank God. Some people have. I can see all hands. Yeah, I can see hands being raised through emotion. There's just that whole feeling of, come on, we are updated. Now, this is my question. What is the full form of GPT? <laughs> so for all the chat GPTs here, what is the full form of GPT? I can already see some people using Google. <laughs> They're like, just search Please it. Please wait when so, I ask GPT that answer. Let's ask chat GPT itself. Let's ask Sorry, chat GPT itself. Yes, let's ask chat GPT itself. Go for it. Tell us your full name. So chat GPT to me is like my first visit to South India. No offense to anybody, but here people have name and then three initials after that. So I'd go and ask them, what does those three stand for? And they'd say father's name and my house name and all of that. So like that you all can go and ask, what does GPT stand for? But look, not all of us might here might know what GPT stands for. But how many of you think that it's difficult to find out what GPT stands for? Yeah, see, it's like a cakewalk, right? No hands going up is a blessing for a speaker because you know people are listening, right? So it's not difficult because we live in a digital era where information is so readily available. Imagine when everything is available on Google and people still come to listen to you. It means you have to give them something more than what the world of WWW can give them. They come to listen to something that perhaps chat GPT cannot give them. So that is why the first rule of public speaking in a digital world is to be able to provide something that the digital world cannot provide and that the human being in you can provide. So that's our rule number one. But keeping in mind that today is Friday, we are going to do it in a little fun way. So this is what I want all of y'all to first tell me. You can unmute and speak. This shouldn't be a monologue from my end. Now imagine you are in a Friday evening and then you've got to go out with your family, which includes your parents. On the other hand, next Friday evening, you are to go out with your friends from college whom you're meeting after 10 years. And then the third Friday evening, you are going to go out with your colleagues from work. These are the three sets of people, right? How many of you here think you can go to the same place with all the three sets of people? 
Let me see. Pradyumna, which is that place? You gotta tell me because I don't think I can, right? Okay, home. so yes. Don't tell me your home. home. <laughs> you know, yes, it's my home. Yeah, I just knew it. Now, this is not happening. I'm, we are in a Friday evening. We're not going to be at home. Can somebody unmute and tell me why not? Why can't you go to the same place with the three different groups? Anybody? Go for it. I don't charge for unmuting. A few of us belong to that category where we look for change every time. Okay. So Bhavani says change is consistency. So that's what she wants. Okay. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? Requirements are different yep. from each group. Requirements yep. are different for each group. Great one. I think Namita got a lot of nods. So everybody agrees. Anything else? We are different in every group we go. Like, oh, amazing. Yeah. Love, Preet. Good job. Yes, we are very different. We don't behave the same way with our friends and with our family right so we collectively agree that with different groups of people we behave differently the requirement of different groups of people from all of us is different and of course we like spicing up things a little so a little bit of change is good there's something you told me i didn't tell you okay so you have to stick to your words but this is exactly the same situation when it comes to public speaking in a digital environment in a world where attention span is so small, it is important. The first rule is know your audience. Whom are you going to address today? If I was to do the same meeting with one of the most senior leadership of my organization, I wouldn't have started with a Friday evening dinner. Don't get me wrong. They all go out on Friday evening, but perhaps we don't share that dynamics where we would talk about Friday evening work after work, our partying, right? We are talking about business, but with y'all, because I know this is fellow Toastmasters who have an open mindset. They'll take it all in. I can start it this way. Ground rule one, and it's I'm going to tell you why this is more important in a digital space than in a personal space because when you do a face to face you still need to know your audience undoubtedly you can't go to a college and talk like you were in a corporate but one difference between a digital space and a in person space is in a in person space you are right there available you can see the people you can see their reaction and even if you haven't done the background work of knowing your audience when you start and you've spoken for the first five minutes and you understood that the audience is not getting a scooby-doo of what you're saying you can make changes because you're able to see reactions but in a digital space you will often not get to see reactions because either people wouldn't turn on their camera or if they have, they're so video conscious that they'd be perfectly positioned. So you wouldn't be able to guess. And that's why it's important that you do your background work, especially when you're presenting in a digital space. Taking this a little beyond Toastmasters, because I know we all have worked beyond Toastmasters. If you are doing presentation sessions from people from a different cultural background, from a different regional background, from a different country, it's important you do some groundwork of that location that they are coming from. It makes a difference. You cannot be going at a Rajdani speech pace of speech if you are talking to an Asian country when English is not the native language, they won't be able to follow you. But you'd only know this if you've done the groundwork. So make sure you do your background or work of understanding What's your audience population? What's the demographics? Whom are you talking to? Which region do they come for? What are they looking forward to from your session? That's rule one. K-Y-A. Know your audience. Now, let's go to the second part of it. Now, let's imagine you have chosen your set. For today, we are going to go with friends because we are all in a little bit of a party mode. So let's go with our friends. You've decided on that amazing place that you want to go to. You've chosen, you've gone there and you've reached. Now you go in with an expectation that today we'll have a lot of gossip and then we'll party, we'll dance a little bit. 
but you go in and you hear they are playing traditional songs which will put you to sleep how would that feel some of you are like is this a comedy show <laughs> right you can feel free to unmute and tell me how would you feel if you landed up at a place on a friday evening where they are playing bhajans let's go sometimes you are yawning that would be like would that would be like lullaby La <laughs> okay some of you are yawning some lullaby shruti i give up to your spirit she says i'll go with the flow <laughs> i'll change my mood to go with bhajan that day well shruti had song but lullaby is also us, go with the flow thing <laughs> go with the flow and sleep right good one so what we basically all agree here is that if we go into a place with a certain set of expectations and it doesn't work that way it doesn't keep us involved it doesn't keep us going the genuine and honest human reaction is we feel sleepy or we lose interest it's like those days when you've been forced to go into a family gathering on 31st night when the rest of your friends were busy celebrating new year through a bike ride or a car drive you were like why on earth am i stuck here but see the tendency is we want to be in a place where we are genuinely interested to be in we want to listen to things that keeps us going and that makes our brain cells work primarily the reason all of you've joined toastmasters because you all want to be at toastmasters don't you so that's our second rule especially for a digital session it's important that you draft your module in a way that is engaging and that keeps your audience involved very important if you were speaking in person and it was a monologue you might still sell through because people can see you so they are at least seeing you and listening but today let's take this count so we have 32 people in house and i can see six people on video so i'm going to assume the rest just don't like me at all or maybe <laughs> they are just too busy on a friday now but look what i'm just trying to say is i can see only six or seven of you all and i know you all are listening to me but i would love to assume that the remaining 25 people here are also listening to me and that's how my module has to be so whenever you are presenting in a digital space please do not make it a monologue try to bring in the concept of a dialogue try to bring in activities and the digital space offers you that you've got several applications kahoot mentimeter slido so many things where you can pop in questions microsoft teams gives you so many apps bring in a poll bring in a question bring in a multiple choice but keep your audience involved when you are drafting that session make sure you build in those pockets which will nudge your audience to then wake up and say okay i've got to participate so you that's what you have to do you don't want to force anyone to listen to you you just want to build it in certain way that it keeps it going so interest and engagement critical you would want to build that in your module now let's see from the non video participants you all can also unmute you know just saying fyi the unmute button works for everyone just for information right so the question is now let's say you've assumed you've gone to the place you loving the music you absolutely liking the vibe the mood is set and then you find your favorite item on the menu the menu has that item that you absolutely love right you go ahead and order one plate it comes you've had it you loved it it was absolutely great and then you order 10 plates of it and you eat up all 10 what will be the reaction anybody what will be the reaction that you've eaten 10 plates of it now law of diminishing marginal utility will, will, will be active <laughs> law of diminishing marginal utility pradyumna was that you <laughs> Yes, it was. It no was wonder you are still studying, buddy. You you have so, such bright future. We have diminished, and the utility has gone as well. But that's okay. Anybody else? What happens if you overeat your favorite snack when you go out on a Friday? 
stomach ache the next day. <laughs> right. You're sick stomach of it. Ache. It's no longer your favorite. Yeah, okay, you're right. sick of it and it's no longer your favorite stomach ache. Good. Let me see. Radhika Joshi. Is that right? Radhika, what will happen to you if you've eaten too much of your favorite food? I think my weekend has just started amazingly. <laughs> yeah. Right. So see, Radhika just instantly came on video. I love that. Good job, Radhika. Okay. I'm going to pick out a there. Namita, don't give food. I missed lunch today. But anyways, okay, right. What we collectively agree is that anything in moderation is great. But anything that's overdone is perhaps not that great. None of us want to fall sick on a Friday evening and then screw up our Saturday, Sunday. Tomorrow HSR has a milestone meeting. So I'm already eating properly so that I can be there. Otherwise, Akshay might kill me, right? But anyways, jokes apart, we all want to do things in moderation. And same is the case for being a presenter in a digital forum. Too much of content. Absolute no-no. You come with a slide deck that looks like a PhD thesis paper. You don't want to do that. You come with a slide deck that has all the information on the slide. You don't need to speak at all. It's all there. They can read the slide and that's it. Let's be honest. We are not addressing people who can't read and write. We are trying to address people who wants to hear from you. So in a digital world, Try and measure your content. You wouldn't want to give so much to people that by the end of the session, they are drained out. You've messed up their weekend or they feel like, what exactly did I get out of this session? I'm so sorry, but I forgot where I started from. When you prepare materials for an online presentation platform, use Features of creativity, use images, use icons, use two letters, use abbreviations, mnemonics, whatever you want to. But don't put in everything that you're going to speak on that deck because then you're not needed. People can read it. Be aware of the content you're putting out there. Measure it, scale it. Most importantly, that urge of yours which tells you, oh, I want to talk about this also, I want to talk about that also. You've got to kill that. You've got to put that to bay and say, right, I've got 20 minutes. I'm going to meet the executive committee of my company. This is what I'm going to put. One, two, three. I step out of the meeting room and I have actions. That's one thing you want to do. Do not put too much of content. Right. So let's rewind. None of us have eaten 10 plates. We all eaten just one. We are happy. We are chilling. And then, so I'm going to keep this lighthearted. So excuse me, um, distinguished Toastmasters and fellow Toastmasters. Do not scold me after the meeting. So you've done all of this and you really enjoy. You're having an amazing time. And then your ex-girlfriend or your ex-boyfriend appears in the scene. Somebody you absolutely didn't like but somewhere that feeling hasn't died so they they are in the scene now and then you were having a real intense conversation with your friends group and then you see this person walk in what exactly happens what's the immediate reaction yeah some of uh, you are already imagining. i mean uh, that's, <laughs> okay. Vinay Tandivarvaya, simbu scene comes to my mind Oh, wow. So after the session, we can have a quick song bite from you um, just to get the flavor of how well you sing. What about others? You suddenly see that person who's left a hole in your heart. What does that make you feel like? Are you still able to concentrate on that very intense discussion with your friends? So some of you are already imagining. Look, this is a virtual party. Okay, don't go up there. You can still be in the session. Right. Okay. Let's ask now. Let's see who's my next. We'll try target. to hide. hide we'll try to hide. hide. <laughs> okay. Don't try under the table. Okay. <laughs> just just be aware of the height and length and breadth. Better to Let's... involve the better to involve the person in the conversation. Oh wow, Venkata. Pradyumna, which world are you coming from? He's got a different league, but I'm going to pick up somebody. Let me see. Rahul Niranjan. So Rahul, 
I don't know if you ever had an ex-girlfriend. If you went on to a party and you found your ex-girlfriend, Landa, how would you feel, Rahul? See, Radhika's already making faces. Right. Go for it, Rahul. Oh, sorry, I can't hear him. You've unmuted, but I still can't hear you. Are you still in that shock of seeing your ex-girlfriend? Sorry. Yeah. Never mind. I think Rahul's just saying I don't like it. Oh my God. Arjun's just switched on his camera the minute we said ex-girlfriend. We know you have an Excel binary workbook, Arjun, but we're not going to ask you this question. Okay, let's go. The moral of this story is we'd either try to hide or we try to go under the table <laughs> or we'd probably lose interest in that very intense conversation and it will whether you like it or not, have an impact on the quality time that you were spending with the group that you went to this party with. Same is the case about speaking in a digital platform. The quality we deliver when we are presenting in a digital platform is extremely difficult. It's not got the same vibe and feel of an in-person. So you already have a challenge to solve for. You want to keep your audience engaged. You want to give them some quality inputs. What you want to avoid in such situations is distractions, just like your ex-boyfriend or your ex-girlfriend. Don't bring them in the picture. If there's an urgent email that's pestering you, park that aside when you're doing that session. If you're constantly getting pings on your team chat, make use of DND. But please ensure that when you are in a session trying to deliver content, it's very easy because it's the same device where you've got a thousand other things boiling up. You want to keep distractions at bay. So that's your fourth rule. People have given you five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, whatever is the duration of your session. You have got to respect that time that individuals are investing in you. Time is important. And if somebody has given you that, to respect that, don't compromise on the quality. Make sure you give them an absolutely amazing session where you are not distracted by anything. Don't keep a toy on your table that keeps going up and down and keeps distracting you, right? But keep free from all distraction. That's the next one you want to do. Finally, now, Shall we get back to the party? Okay, we're back to the party again. So now this person who is distracting you has left because you ignored that person, okay? So now they've left. Now we're back to the party and we're partying. Now let's come to this, right? You were discussing about school days memories with this group of friends that you've been with and you're really enjoying that reunion. You're having fun. You're remembering good old times. And then somebody in that group suddenly talks about cryptocurrency. How exactly will you feel? Anybody in the audience? Let's ask Supradeep. He does trading. So Supradeep, suddenly between your school friend discussion, if cryptocurrency creeps up, then how would your reaction be? He's going to scold me tomorrow, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm not too much into cryptocurrency, but... <laughs> It would be rather very weird to like talk about trading with school friends. We usually end up talking about cricket or something. Exactly. It's very weird, I'd rather like, discuss talk the things out of context. Correct. Very good. Thank you, Supradeep, for putting the right words. I didn't plant him there at all. This was impromptu response from him. Okay. Anybody else, if somebody suddenly brings out an absolutely out of the league topic, how does that make you feel in a very intense discussion? Hmm, let's see. I'm going to, let's ask Akshay because he just talks all the time. Akshay, how would that make you feel? He's probably left. Um, oh, no. no, no, I'm here. I mean, I would probably go along with it generally. Oh, like, no. That's what I would personally try. And I would eventually pivot it to my favorite topic, which is uh, <laughs> bananas. Perfect. Thank you, Akshay. Yeah, you see, Akshay is very intelligent, so he can go with the flow. I would leave the chat. <laughs> so I pick up a different chat. But thank you. Look, whether we go with the flow just to be good to our friends or whether we absolutely find it out of the box, your online audience are not necessarily your school friends. 
So if you come into a session and speak about something that's not of relevance to them, you will lose your audience. So when you're preparing for speaking in a digital forum, make sure you're preparing with content that is relevant to the topic that you're to speak on, that's relevant to the audience you're addressing, and that also is practical and realistic. Relevance in any presentation is extremely key. If you are speaking it at office, let's say you're making a presentation at work, your Colleagues probably want to know the new idea that will help them bring about some efficiency in their process. Then if you talk about the cultural event that happened at work, people will listen to you two, three minutes and then they lose it. So relevance and second thing, keywords. Always pick up some keywords when you're addressing an online gathering because that will stay with them as a takeaway. Like I know after every session that I have done in Namita's presence, she very nicely summarizes and sends it over to everyone. But that's that's really what you want to use in your session. Something that's relevant. If you're going to, for example, as Toastmasters, you might go to address a corporate club. Look at things like, what is the word in the corporate? What's their value, their mission, their objective? Or is there a buzzword that people use? If you're going to a college, then make sure you know what their hashtag is. If you're going to a community club, see what they abide by. What's been the model of that club? Same at work. If you are picking up a presentation on data, then probably, say in my organization now, synthetic data is the talk of the town. So when I do a presentation, I must make sure I bring in that element of synthetic data and people who don't have a scooby-doo about it, who were not listening to me, will suddenly have their heads turned. That's what keywords can do. So have relevance and keywords. Very finally, let's try and get a little bit closed out. So now let's say we were um, having this very important party. So discussions are done. Now we chill. We we almost nearing the end and the dance floor is open. I don't know if Bhavani dropped off, but this question would have been so relevant for her. But let's say the dance floor is now open and everybody is ready there. See, you talk about dance and Bhavani is back on camera. Right. So you go there and now the dance floor is open. You are having the absolute fun music playing and somebody does Bharat Natyam. How would that make you feel in the most hip hop music? Uh, of course, let's not talk about fusion and all here. We're talking about a general dance floor with some cool music going on. How would you feel if somebody's trying their best classical moves? Let's go. Anybody. Don't get offended. It's not personal. OK, let's ask. Ha, huh, Nana. Nana guessed it says now. I don't know which Nana that is, but Nana, do you want to give it a try? Is that Nana, ma'am? Okay, Nana, ma'am, do you want to give it a try? How would you feel if somebody would do Bharat Natyam on hip hop music in a dance party? Oh no, Nana, ma'am's going to scold me tomorrow. Okay, let's switch over and go to Jitendra. Shall we ask you? You haven't spoken at all. Uh... Actually, it will actually not match with the vibe of that place. He's so reluctant. Did you have a friend who did this at some point? No, I'm just kidding. But thank you for that. Yes, I, I agree. It wouldn't match with the vibe of the place. It's respected. You would probably buy it in because it's your friend. But when you go to a dance floor where loud music is playing, you just want to go with the flow and you don't want to try your classical moves. Same is the case with a digital forum speech. You want to ensure that you are aligned to that digital screen. In a digital world, the screen is your stage. And this is just a tip. When you're speaking in a digital world, please make sure you've adjusted your camera, you've got your presence correct. If you're addressing a gathering in a digital world, you don't want to sit at the corner edge of the camera where the whole world can just see your office space and not you. 
you wouldn't want to pull out things that nobody can relate to. So some background work is my screen sharing working fine. Did I put my PPT in presentation mode? Am I ensuring that I'm sitting right in front of the camera? Is my voice correct? Is my audio device in order? These might sound very cliche and some of you might be thinking, oh, I know this, but believe me in my 12 hours of discussing different things on a digital forum with people day in day out. I see this happening every single day. People join calls, struggle first two minutes to connect to audio, then drop off, then join back. And by the time they come back, it's 10 minutes. We've lost it. I am not willing to hear that anymore because I'm rushing for my next call. We see people come in, present on slides, and then we have to tell, can you increase the font? Can you put the slide on presentation mode? I'm so sorry I can't see your screen. That might be very small, but does impact your credibility as a presenter. So please do these groundworks, these checks, and make sure you don't allow your audience to ask you for anything for a single moment. We are humans, we make mistakes, we won't be perfect, but we can strive to be as perfect when you're presenting in a digital world because first impression really matters. If your first impression gets a little messed up, you can still create an impression, but you have to work harder. And I am lazy. I don't like working harder. So I put my cards right from the beginning, right? So that's what you've got to keep in mind. The final thing that I'll tell you with, so now the party is almost ending and we're going home. So that's why I've got my last point here. The last point is what y'all just did here today in this session, and that is listening. Till now in my talking or whatever number of minutes I have spoken to, I haven't got one irrelevant response to my question, which means all of you are listening. And listening and attention is extremely important for public speaking in a digital world because you need to first hear what the other person has said before you can say something which will pose as a decent question, which will pose as the correct response to their question. So many times in sessions, I might have to stop people in between and say, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I don't think you got the question right. And you don't want to be in that position. The only reason, look, we are humans, we understand English. It's not I, that the person didn't get the question right, not because they don't understand English. It's because they heard only the last two words of that question. And for the first five words, they were busy responding to that email that didn't need attention that time. So please listen. Pay due attention. Your audience deserves it. If you're going into a forum and you've asked a question, can you all tell me who likes this? And then don't go on. Give them that two minutes to listen to what they have to say and then go on. So listening and attention equally key. In summary, first thing, know your audience. So first thing you want to do, do your background work, know your audience. Second, make sure you design your module in such a way that people are interested. They genuinely want to listen to you. They feel involved with you when you're conducting the session. Third, do not put out too much content. There's so much that people get drowned in content. They lose you in between or you've put out so much there that you don't need to speak. Fourth, Avoid distractions. Make sure that 30 minutes, you blocked your calendar, you give them that 30 minutes, finish your session, then block 15 minutes to catch up on anything that you missed out on. Plan your calendar well, but ensure you provide that quality without any distractions. Fifth, make sure the content you're delivering is relevant and you are making use of keywords. Relevance of what you're saying will take you a long way and keywords will always make people turn their ears towards you. Sixth point, let's be aligned when it comes to our setups, our gestures, our screen presence, what we're sharing. Let's be prepared with everything so that we are ready from the go we present a neat content and we step out. And very finally, something that's losing essence in today's world, please take the effort 
to listen, pay attention and give people exactly what they've asked you for. It's extremely important that we value people's time and then we allow them to feel that I attended this and it was worth it. As a speaker in any forum, the minute you leave the stage, if one person walks up to you and says, I've got something from your session today, you're successful as a speaker, but that will need you to do your bit of groundwork. That was my time. Happy to take questions. Uh, Arunti, I have a question. Yes, please. First, thank you for the beautiful session. It was amazing. Uh, my question is, now say as a speaker, uh, if our attention span falters, so instead of uh, you know, not giving a message that I didn't hear you, uh, like you said, we just take the cue of the last few words and then we give an irrelevant response. So instead of that, is it rude to ask them to repeat their question? Because Perfect. I have yes. made a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's absolutely OK. I'm going to just check myself. So Radhika, that's the right name, right? Because I see Joshi right. Radhika on the screen. So I'm going to yeah, assume Radhika. it's Radhika Joshi. Perfect. Thank you, Radhika, for that question. Very relevant and very prevalent in today's digital world. So first thing, of course, try and give that attention so that you're not losing out and giving half baked a cent. That remains rule one. Coming to whether it is rude to ask them to repeat or not, not at all. It's not rude at all. It's absolutely fine. There are two ways in which you can do this. If you've heard 50% of the question and you think you've got the context, what you can do is just to be sure, reiterate the question. Ask the person that my understanding is this is what you're asking. And if they say yes, you can go ahead. And if they feel that's not what they've asked, they'll automatically repeat it themselves and then you've got the question. But if you've not heard it at all, and this need not be for your attention, could be a technical glitch, then you can absolutely say, I'm so sorry, but I don't think I caught it. If you could kindly repeat and they'll repeat. It's just about how we package, but it's not rude at all. I hope that helps. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Radhika. Anything else? Uh, hi, hi, Arundhati. So your speech was like as if you practice what you preached. So the, the speech that you gave was itself a learning for me. So whatever you enlisted to us, it was uh, I learned from your speech how to present a speech. So myself, I speak in different clubs all over the world. So recently I presented a, a speech in a club in Ukraine. So it, it was about I need to give an informational speech and then I need to uh, do a Q&A session. What happened was after the informational speech Q&A session, no one asked me any questions. I was wondering, uh, so how can I tackle that or maybe uh, so I, need, yeah, I was relevant. As you said, I was relevant. I made it. Uh, I made a PPT. I told my I have a huge crush on Mila Kunis because she's from Ukraine. <laughs> I, I did so many things. But still, why didn't they ask me questions? Perfect. Let me first get your name correct. Is that Aloysius? How do you pronounce it? Is that right? Yeah, Aloysius. Yeah, you're right. Aloysius. OK, perfect. Thank you for that question. Look, you're not alone in that, right? I'm sure any anybody here in this forum who's done keynote sessions would have at least come across certain situations when nobody asked any question. And how I would tackle it is I love myself, so I'm going to assume I was crystal clear and everybody understood everything. <laughs> but just being very upfront and honest as a speaker, as long as you have done all your groundwork correct, you've spoken to the audience the right way, you've engaged them while delivering the speech. If after that they haven't come up with a question, you should take it in a positive tone to your own credibility that perhaps whatever doubts they had in their mind have got cleared in your presentation. And maybe at that moment they don't have a question. I'd rather appreciate audience who ask relevant questions than audience who ask questions for the sake of it. As a speaker, I'd love that more. So take it to your own credibility is what I would say. Uh, Thank one you. One suggestion from my end, which I found was kind of helpful, is instead of asking people, do you have any questions? 
you can say what are your questions? Because when you use the turn of phrase, do you have any questions? You kind of make them a little conscious. So when you say something like, you know, what are your questions or I'm ready for questions, it helps. And also you can be a little funny by saying, OK, so you're not going to ask questions, so I am going to ask questions. I found <laughs> yeah, that Namita always does that. OK, she always asks us questions if we don't ask her questions. But no, that trick works. People ask questions. <laughs> but no, I think I agree with what she said. It's a little bit of what ease can you put your audience at makes a lot of difference. We sometimes don't ask questions to leaders who are very strict. We'd rather ask questions to a leader who's much approachable. So what how much ease have you put your audience at helps? But if you like I said, if you've done all your groundwork correct and still nobody's asked your question, my friend, you're a brilliant speaker. That's what you need to take to yourself. Good. Anything else? Yeah, I don't know. One question yes. I have. Yeah. Yes. See, uh, so sometimes when this question answer uh, things happen, sometimes what happens, we get some impromptu questions. And uh, after explaining, we have a urge to over explain the question, like improving on the sports. How do we overcome these things? Because uh, this thing, much, most of the time, this thing happens with me. Like I explain something, then I started feeling, no, I have not explained very well. I should go again. Then I'll keep on improvising it. And then it has become like, uh, I feel like it's a mess then. Very good. Extremely relevant. Jitendra, thank you so much for that question. Firstly, I'm certain I'm demonstrating this over explanation as I speak sometimes here as well. But just to answer your question, firstly, in a Q&A session, it's very obvious to get impromptu questions like Ajay didn't tell me about the questions y'all are going to ask. So it's all impromptu, right? But how do we stop ourselves from over explaining? What helped me is what I'm going to share with you. What you do is when you throw in that question whose immediate response you're not aware of, take two to three seconds to sink in that question and frame your answer. It's absolutely OK because two seconds goes in unmuting only. So it's absolutely fine to take two seconds. Listen, listening also helps here. Like now when you were telling your question, I heard you and my answers were getting framed, but take two, three seconds. Frame your response and then deliver that response and don't drag it. It's OK. You have to make yourself first understand that if you give a 30 second response to the question that you've got, that's the max that person can take in. So that's something you have to convince yourself of. Give one well framed answer and stop it. there. It's a conscious effort, but framing it well helps. Thank you. Anything else? Here on the this is Sagar Dispay. Yes. Hello, Sagar. So uh, my question is, it, it, like many times I have noticed when QA happens, you know, uh, the question will be repeated by a different member. So it would have been already answered. And after one question, again with the same intensity, you know, a guy asked the same question. And it becomes funny because it was explained well in the first time. So how to handle that? Uh, should we have patience to, you know, answer that again or we can just say it was answered before? <laughs> Thank you, Sagar, for that question. Extremely relevant for any education session speaker. So patience, my friend, is virtue. Do some meditation before doing an education session is my tip one. But no jokes apart, what I would honestly say is the reason sometimes questions get repeated is because you have a set of audience who really want to ask that question. Sometimes I might have been the first one who wanted to ask the question, but somebody asked and they asked the same as me. But I cannot hold back on my temptation to still ask you a question to make you realize that I did have a question for you. So it's absolutely OK. Take it in the right spirit and think, OK, this is a person who is genuinely interested to ask me a question that helps. Secondly, coming to patients, I would rather apply a slightly different technique and say that 
I understand this comes from the same set of thoughts that the first person asked. So what I would say is you could do A, B and C and maybe add a D on and say that's my response. So you might want to tweak your response slightly instead of telling it's the same question because people take it a little offensively. The minute I'm told oh, you asked what Namita asked, then I'm like, I become sad, right? So you don't want to make your audience feel sad. What you wish to do is take that question up, repackage your same response in a subtle manner, maybe add on one additional point and close it there. That helps. Thank you. Okay. And with, with the interest of time, we'll take just one last question. <laughs> yeah, sure. Arundhati. Otherwise, Ajay yeah. will ask. Yes, Pradyumna. Okay. What if we don't have an answer for a question asked? Very good. I don't think you will ever face that situation, my friend, because you have answers to every question. No, just joking. Um, if I don't know the answer to a question, my response would always be that I don't know. I believe as speakers, it's important we are genuine first and then a speaker. So it's OK to say I don't know, but it depends on how you say the don't know. So you can say at this moment, fellow Toastmaster, I do not know the exact response to your question, but what I'll do is I go back, check on this and come back to you with a response. That way you've told the speaker I don't know at the moment, but you've also reassured that speaker that I'm going to find out and come back to you. So whenever you say I don't know, make sure you top it up to say that you'll come back. More importantly, please find out and come back. Don't say that I'll find out and come back just for the sake of it. Keep that in mind after your session. Go do your back end work and then come back. If you know of somebody who might know that, like I went for a technology conference panel last day. My topic was very different. I spoke about it and somebody asked me an extremely technical question that I wasn't aware of, but I had a fellow colleague from the technology team and I said, look, I don't know the complete answer. This is my thought. I have a fellow colleague who will give that answer. If there's somebody else in the forum, pass it on. If it's Toastmaster and you have Arjun Sundar Raj, pass it on to him. Or if you have your district director, just, just division director, you've got Namita Bhavani, just, just pass it on to them. No, what I'm just trying to say is make sure you find out and give back to the speaker or find out somebody else who can provide that response, right? There. So Pradeep is laughing. You can pass it on to him also. I hope that helps, Pradyumna. Yeah, it helps. Perfect. In the interest of time, that was the last question. So on that note, I would just say division. I thank you very much for this opportunity. Lovely topic. I was thrilled when Ajay shared the topic with me. Great to be with all of you all. Thank you for making time on a Friday evening. It's been an absolute pleasure. Like I say at the end of all my education sessions, I am not available on any social media platform. So if you ever want to reach out to me, my number is available with your fellow members here. Feel free to drop a message if there's anything I can help you with. On that note, over to you, Toastmaster Ajay. Thank you, Toastmaster Arundhati. That was truly mesmerizing. What I always tell people is that in the virtual world, we always find it a challenge to create the same magic that the speakers create in the in-person stages. But with Arundhati, I have seen you in person and I've seen you in the virtual world too. And I must truly commend you for the magic that you create in both the worlds equally. And I'm sure with all the tips that you have shared here with to be with us here today, we all will be going away as much more com effective communicators, not just in the virtual world, but in the in-person world too. Thank you, Arundhati, for sharing all those valuable tips. I'd also like to take this <clears throat> opportunity to thank all of the district officers, our district directors, Bhavani, Nanama, uh, Namita, our own fellow area directors, Kavina, we even had an inner director across the district. We had Suhail from District 92 joining us here today. So I'd like to thank all those district officers for joining us here today. And I'd like to offer a special thanks to our very own district director, distinguished Toastmaster Arjun Sundaraj for joining us here and for being here with us right from the beginning till the end. So Arjun, can I please invite you to join us on stage and share a few words? 
let me just step out of this place. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much. First of all, Ajay, uh, for giving me the opportunity to address. Okay, Namita and Arundhati, hats off to you people. Arundhati, a better hats off, a special hats off, of course, because of the session. Absolutely agree and echo with what uh, Ajay mentioned uh, just a, a few a minute ago. Uh, every single time you uh, you take stage, you manage to help us become better, and that's truly what makes a big difference in our journey. And Namita and her team of area directors, fantastic idea on coming up with such sessions for our members. I think we would need such sessions, such educational, uh, uh, what do you call, opportunities for members more than anything else to grow beyond the uh, club environment and make use of the learning opportunity that we have in and around District 121. Thank you so much for planning this out. I'm pretty sure many more such sessions are lined up. I would definitely encourage the club leaders sitting over here in this meeting to make sure that we are able to invite more and more members to make use of such opportunities. And uh, hats off to you people. Thank you so much. Back to you, Ajay. Thank you, Arjun, for those inspiring words. We will definitely continue the work and we will be coming back with a session on the last Friday of every with that i'd like to thank you all for joining us here today on a friday evening and i won't take too much more of your time so i let you go back and enjoy the time with your family and friends wish you all a good day and a happy weekend can thank we all come on cam for a quick picture yeah and then see you at the party <laughs> at the end yeah <laughs> come on now yes. let's go